Happy Monday. Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up. It's Mailbag Monday. I am Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. And boy, we have a bursting mailbag today. Thank you for getting all your questions in via Twitter, via Discord, via snail mail, whatever you did. We appreciate you. We're going to do our best to get everybody's questions answered. But before we get into it, Make sure if you're watching us on YouTube, you smash that like button and you subscribe to the YouTube page. If you are a podcast listener, make sure you are following or subscribed on your preferred podcast app. If you want to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, that would be greatly appreciated as well. There is just a ton to get to. You can see the newest addition to our set. Looks pretty good. Joey laid it out beautifully before the show today so uh, smash that like button if you like our new set piece and if you're going to get yourself one <laughs> in the coming weeks and months before we get started we had a couple uh, our, our guy Lawrence was concerned he's like what if he doesn't wear 98 it seems pretty certain he's going to wear 98 yeah why not be the one and only yeah yeah 16 yeah, is the I would say that's team safe. Canada number and guys are to sort of assign those ahead of the tournament yeah you know Most, Jonathan Taze wore that there and yeah because you know, he there was a 19 in the I think he let Joe Thornton Joe Thornton have one year and probably 2010 and then someone else said 19 20 was it Joe Thornton both years was 19 maybe, I think maybe, probably. maybe John been. Tavares one of those years is he 19 19 no. or 91 91 it's might 91. have been Stamkos yeah I don't know oh uh, whatever but yeah yeah no uh no one's ever worn 98 in Blackhawks history so be unique be the only be like Marion Hosa the only 81 ever. The one and only. The only 98 ever. There's been a million 16s. Yeah. Drew Jarkera, Marcus Kruger. Yeah. Andrew Ladd. Eddie Olchek. Eddie Olchek. Michel Goulet. Uh, yes, Michel Goulet. Um, it's just kind of a run-of-the-mill number. It is. It's, it's a very, like, common, well, you want to be a teen, this is the only one available to take it. Yeah. Type number. Yes, I'm, I'm willing. I made the bet he's going to wear 98, and I'm, I, I'm pretty confident in that one. So, <laughs> And if not, then you have a real collector's item. There you go. Uh, yeah. There you go. It looks awesome. All right, should we get to the questions, Joey? Yeah. Let's sure. do it. All right. <clears throat> Did you save some room for the eventual C uh, on there? Oh, yeah, there's room. Right, I think Mario's right. got the extra C that he just carries around, right? right? The one on yeah. the shelf there, yeah. 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 Get some yep. scotch tape that still there. blew my mind. I thought you just had that, like, handy that like one in day my pocket yeah like you were just carried around because <laughs> no, i didn't realize it was like that discussion i pulled over on no big earlier. deal here you go. Yeah. <laughs> just oh. thought it was something he had oh, we're, we're, we're down the street from gunzo's i felt inspired it was a bit like two it bucks no i mean it was good it was good that was not two bucks all right <laughs> no it was not i feel like we should kick it off right here it's sort of the title of the episode do you think Connor bedard will have a better career <laughs> than patrick kane not necessarily cup wise. So we're talking: Will he be a better statistical player than Patrick Kane? Uh, if I was to bet on that, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. I mean, hey, uh, all the projections and hopes and dreams and expectations of him are to be somewhere along the lines of Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, like these types of players. Um, if he hits his ceiling, definitely. He'll definitely have a, a more statistically uh, impressive career than Patrick Kane. It's a huge if. He's still 17, but hey, if, it, EA seems to believe so. So yeah, we'll go off of that. I mean, if the projections and the and the and you know the prognosticating is correct, he will have a better statistical. Yeah. So if you, I mean, you look a, at he's Kane, a, he's a better goal scorer than yeah, Kane ever was. Exactly, only 200 points, only two hundred point seasons for Patrick Kane. And another 92 point season. Obviously, a great player, the greatest American born player of all time so far. Because I think when it's all said and done, Austin Matthews might have that crown. Maybe. Um, but if we're just talking individual statistics and not team accomplishments, I think Bedard will have a better statistical career than Kane. Yes. It's going to come down to who he, who he plays with, too. True. Because Bedard can put up the assist numbers Patrick Kane has put up throughout his career. And that's, that's where. You know he's gotten more more of his points as the assists, but Bedard can score potentially fifty, maybe sixty goals a season. And Kane never really was that threat. What, what's his career? Career high, high is forty eight. 
40. Or 46, I'm sorry, 46. Right, and he had, yeah. what, two 40-goal seasons his career? He had, the one? Uh, in 2015-16, he had 46 goals. In 2018-19, he had 44. I forgot. Those oh. are the only seasons he had 40. Also, he has seasons of 33, 34, and 30. So he's never mm-hmm. in the high 30s, really. And that 15-16 was, that was the heart his trophy, MVP yeah. year, first, time, first year playing with Panarin. And eighteen nineteen, that was his career best year, alongside the career best years of Alex DeBrinket and Jonathan Taze. Right. Yeah, I. That was I, the all gas no breaks Blackhawks. Yes, <laughs> I, I always forget that Kane and Taves had their best career years in a year they did not make the playoffs. Yeah, it's insane. yeah, insane. What a wasted season that was. But uh, yeah, I think when it's all said and done, if everything pans out. Yes, Bedard will finish his career with more points than Patrick Kane did for the Blackhawks. Cups, individual hardware, we'll see. We'll see. But the potential is there. Mm-hmm. Now let's save this clip for 20 years and revisit it then. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Mark let's hope down. we're still here in 20 years. There you Just go. me on the planet, you guys here at ZHGO. <laughs> um, I'll take that. I'll take uh, 65. You can go fat. You can go past sixty-five, over. barely. Are we doing doing an over life under pool? expectancy draft. over under pool? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. I don't like that because I, I might be in the negative already. <laughs> All, All right, right what do we got next, Joey? All right, let's keep yeah. it for Bedard. Here we'll go. Who do you want the Hawks to sign to surround Connor next year? Everybody. Do you yeah, mean not- next year, as in this upcoming season? Yes. Yeah. You don't have to go crazy this year. We've talked a little bit about it. Um, you need to be smart. You've got a lot of young players that are all going to need contracts at some point. You've got much better free agent classes coming up as soon as 2024, 2025, 2026. Those are all going to be much better free agency classes now yeah. than uh, what's coming up this summer. You know, we, we've talked a lot over the past, since last Monday, these types of players. Uh, you've got, you know, Max Domi is a good player. Um, you know, we talked about maybe trading with for Brock Besser or Connor Garland with the Canucks. You know, an Alex Kalorn type player, if he's willing to come to a, a team in this situation. You have other guys. You know, I, I, I mentioned like a Josh Alivo would be a nice mm-hmm. player. Uh, you look at these past playoffs, two guys that jump out at me that could fit what the Blackhawks are doing, and they have the same last name. Ryan McLeod with Edmonton, Michael McLeod with New Jersey. They were both effective players on their team, especially Michael McLeod. Kind of had a – he's a restricted free agent, mm. but New Jersey's got a lot of decisions to be made, and he might be one of those guys that gets sure. just the numbers game. So yeah. those are the type of guys you look for. I think – I'm not thinking you're going to go out and try and trade for William Nylander or, or you know, sign Vladimir Tarasenko to a big deal. It doesn't make any sense at this point. Yeah, I think if if I if to answer the question, if we're signing someone for next year, uh, my top choice would probably be Max Domi, because we know he wants to be here. We know he likes being here. We know he likes the coach. It works here for him. Yeah, uh, he's also a guy who is f- uh, versatile enough to play center or wing, mm-hmm. up and down the lineup. He checks a lot of boxes without taking up a lot of money. Uh, like JT Comfer, mm-hmm. think that makes some sense. Uh, you mentioned Alex Kaloran makes some sense, and. I mean, if you could convince him to take a short contract, Ryan O'Reilly would be – d- I don't know if he's interested in that, but if Ryan O'Reilly's interested in wearing number 90 for the Blackhawks – oh, wait, I had to talk to Tyler Johnson mm. – wearing number 91 for the Blackhawks, <laughs> then, you know, cool. I- I'm down with Ryan O'Reilly for two years, maybe three. Yeah. But I, I just – it doesn't feel to me that his final contract is going to be helping Connor Bedard into the league yeah. in Chicago. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think he's going to go for another cup. Um, and Jason Zucker is mentioned in the chat. That's a name that comes up a lot. Yeah. I mean, maybe he can't, you know, his biggest issue is, is, is been his health a little bit, but that could be a guy, but he's another guy. Yeah. A one-year deal for Jason Zucker traded deadline. I mean, that only, uh, the, but uh, that, that is he, that, I think if, if you're, if you're looking for guys that are going to try and help insulate Bedard in his first year, first two years, you got to do more than a one-year deal that you're going to flip because you'd want that player to come in and be around for more than just 50, 60 games. Right, because yeah. you still need someone to insulate him the last 
twenty five games. Right. Yeah. Year. Exactly. So um, yeah. yeah, I I, mean, I I think there there's there's good players that are, you're not going to break the bank for that you can go for this summer. I I agree with Jay. Like uh, Domi is is probably top of the list. It'd be great to have him come back. Um, he's been playing really well with Dallas uh, in the playoffs. So. Um, that's maybe driving his market value up a little bit, but um, you know we'll see when it when it gets to summer. But yeah, I think I think Domi would be great. O'Reilly, he said today that you know he's more than likely going to go to the market rather than try and get a deal done with Toronto beforehand. Um, that'd be interesting. I I I I would wonder if he would maybe buy into you know what Davidson's building be kind of that that veteran guy to come in um you know lead that lead that forward group for a year uh get them acclimated to the nhl and then eventually kind of fall back and you know be the uh, beneficiary of maybe playing on a line with reichel or bedard as they grow and mature into their nhl career and maybe eventually be around for be be an older guy on a young team that maybe could be contending like i don't know it, it, the option of coming to Chicago has become greater to free agents this week than it was last week. Yeah. So, well, uh, I, it's it'll be interesting to see what yeah, happens. I, I think that could be intriguing for for a guy like Ryan O'Reilly. But if there wasn't two teams that are going to be in desperate need of, of veteran centers this summer, i.e., his former team, the Colorado Avalanche, yeah. and the Boston Bruins. If either, if, if either of those teams come calling, he might decide to like, yeah, I'm going to go here for two years and try and win a cup. Sure. So we'll yeah. see. Um, there should be plenty of options. I think this year you're going to have more agents calling Kyle Davidson than obviously last year. There's going to be a few players saying, hey, check with the Chicago. See, mm-hmm. if they, see if they're interested. Yeah. Hey, shirtless dark guy is out having there a smoke. He there he is. He's All ready right. to go. It's a great day. Ready to go. It's this officially a CHG Blackhawk show. That's right. Good for sure. Let's All right. What do we got next, Joey? Um, okay, quick one just from the chat before we turn it over to some draft questions, some other roster questions. But real quick, TV Monumental, will Bedard be our Capitan? Uh, I mean, not, I think at not, some point. Not this season, next season. I, yeah, it's going to be his team. 100%. You yeah. talk, we talked with uh, Dante DiCaria. Di- Car- Dante DiCaria. Mm-hmm. Who is the voice of the uh, Regina Pats? Um, called every game of uh, Bedard's career, I believe, uh, the last two years in, in the WHL. Um, that interview, go back and watch it once we're done here today. Uh, really get a feel for Connor Bedard's character uh, from a guy who's been around him for the last two years. I mean, I don't. You're not going to hear too many people speak about a teenager uh, in the sports world like that. Like Dante did give that insight. There's all. There's also a Even lot. Even I'm of remembering other, those the interview you guys did with the three prospects with Korczynski. Yeah, yeah. Like they spoke so highly of him yeah, just as yep. a as a Absolutely. as a locker room guy. So I mean, this is this is a kid that has been. Uh, I hate to use the term groomed, but this is a guy that's been prepared and indoctrinated, if you will. <laughs> he, he's he's been prepared. Uh, from you know, coaches, teammates, uh, his family, his parents, been prepared to be an NHL player for a very long time. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, the the intangibles that it seems like he already has. I mean, I don't see there why there's any reason he's not going to be put front and center, uh, and and not not necessarily you know, kind of forced to take a leadership role because, hey, you're the face of our franchise. You're the best player on the team. You're going to be the captain. I think it's going to be that he he wants to do that. He can embrace that. That's kind of his personality. Yeah. Um, so I think it'll. I think they'll they'll do just like they did with Jonathan Tays. Uh, do it very early and say you know give him you know the keys to the uh, to the car. Someone in the chat had said, "Can you discuss the zero point one percent chance they take Adam Fantilli?" That's not happening. No, they're they're why, taking no. Connor Bedard. Why would they do that? They're they're not going to do that. They're not going to overthink it. He who shall not be named is not the guy making decisions, trying to outsmart everybody. They're taking Connor Bedard. They don't sell five million dollars in season tickets over Adam Fantilli. Right? Maybe two million. Not Nothing five. against him. Nothing against Fantilli. Be, no. He's probably going to be a very, 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 very good player. Yeah. It's Connor Bedard. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, we should mention, speaking of Connor Bedard, if you go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash sports, there is a Connor Bedard uh, master playlist <laughs> with several, what, I think like up to 10 videos now. Yeah. We'll be constantly updating it throughout the off season. We've got our interview with uh, Dante DiCaria. We've got our interview with Cam Robinson, Kyle Davidson, uh, the Blackhawks prospects, the trio of prospects, Emily Kaplan. There's a bunch of stuff. So if we have spent time talking about Connor Bedard, it is there. Uh, on that Connor Bedard playlist on our YouTube page. So check that out. And I should mention, too, tomorrow at 2, we're going to welcome Stephen Wino to the show. Stephen Wino was in the room when the lottery balls were pulled in the Blackhawks' favor. So he's going to take us a little bit behind the curtain to how that all went down. Uh, I think it'll be really interesting to talk to him. And he's got his book about the e-bugs, and he's just a hockey guy in general. So mm. a ton to talk about Stephen with him. Wino. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of the, uh, so 2 o'clock tomorrow, Stephen will be on the show. All right. What else? Uh, next question? Yeah. All right, so people want to talk about the draft, not necessarily related to Bedard, but okay. a lot of questions about the draft. If the Hawks are looking to trade up, how far do you think they could realistically get? I think Vancouver at 11 is a good target, but could they possibly sneak into the back end of the top 10? Uh, is it possible they could take uh, Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov and, and Mantha, yeah. Mantha and get up to eight? That's a lot of cap. But it's only two. I don't years. think Washington's trading the eighth pick just to get rid of Kuznetsov, who, by the way, is Alex Ovechkin's good buddy. Right. And you don't want to piss him off because yeah. he is your money maker for the next two to three seasons. Mm-hmm. As they're obviously in a little bit of a down tick. But hey, we got this record you're, chasing yeah, coming. You're still going to sell you, tickets. You don't want to piss off Alex Ovechkin because he may just take his ball and go back to Russia. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's I also a, an opportunity to maybe coerce. Uh, Mitch Mavi Mitchkov yeah, exactly. to come over a little bit earlier than if necessary. If anybody can make a phone call to Russia and get this kid over here a year or two sooner, it's Alex Ovechkin. Yes. And that eighth spot is right about right. maybe so, where hey, he's, he's going to slip. If he falls, if he falls there, 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 yeah. that could be it. I don't think, yeah, the Caps aren't going to give up number eight to, to get rid of either of those two guys. Just That's too valuable of a pick in this year's draft. And they need some kind of future. They, they, like, <laughs> they need yeah. a few, they, Yeah, they've they've really focused on the here and now. Not the future so much. Like the one team I could see, uh, and obviously trading up could happen. It, I mean, we're going to get a lot of questions here about it. Um, the right scenario has to happen, and it's got to be the right trading partner, team that could maybe give up a top 10 pick and get more picks later in this draft. A team that, that kind of fits a little better is St. Louis, but I don't think the Blues are going to bend over backwards to help out the Blackhawks. Same thing get, with Detroit. Play. Yeah, I mean, Detroit could. I mean, Detroit's not in the, the division anymore. So, But you don't want to help a team that you might be beat, you sure, know, yeah. competing Directly for in your with, division. Yeah. Help them get better to possibly knock your ass out of the playoffs for the next five or six years. Right. Detroit, you wouldn't have to worry as much about that. But those are two teams that... Could move down a little bit. St. Louis does need some young influx into their roster, but they've got their core. A lot of guys left from that 2019 still there. I think they're going to have a bounce back season next year, so they could afford to maybe move off that pick to get you know that other Hawks first round pick and one of those second round picks. But it all, it's so it's so hard to predict that because yeah. the draft mm-hmm. day is 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 insane. Once Fantilli goes off the board. That's when the crazy stuff is going to happen. Yeah. All bets are off yeah. at that point. Who and knows? Mitch Karoff is such a wild card, too. I mean, he could theoretically go second. Mm-hmm. He could theoretically go 10th. Like, right. no one know. And that's the guy who's going to be yeah. the, like, what happens with him yeah. is going to dictate a lot. I really don't think And the f- more he slips, the more you're going to get phone call- phones ringing yep. and trade-ups happening. I and- can't imagine he gets past 10. I don't think he gets no, past think Washington so at 8, to be honest with right. you. Yeah. yeah, that just seems that such seems, a perfect that seems like way to such bail a- him out. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we'll see. You know, these teams have done their due diligence, and there's pro- they know things that aren't out there. They know things that we don't, yeah. either positive or negative. But if he slips past Washington, then I'm going, uh-oh, what's going on? And, the, yeah. and to the question, you know, looking at Vancouver at 11, like we, we discussed the, uh, the spitball scenario that Cam Robinson had thrown out there about Chicago and Vancouver maybe – coming together to figure out something to help Vancouver get rid of either Connor Garland or Brock Besser. If you say, hey, Brock Besser and our 11th pick will take 19 and maybe 
a few second round picks or, or a second and a third and pros, you know, low mid tier prospect, whatever, get creative with it. Like there, there could be a few, you know, two birds, one stone kind of scenario um, with that. So, I mean, it's, the options are open. That's what I, I am most excited about this off season with, you know, with the draft, with free agency, with everything like Kyle Davidson going into last year was just like, okay, how are you going to construct a tanking team that's going to get us Connor Bedard? Now we're in the position of, okay, mission accomplished. We have landed the top overall pick. It, it, it is going to be Connor Bedard. Now what? And it seems like there's going to be a lot of options, a lot of flexibility for him to work with. Yep. It's going to be an awesome trip to take. Yeah, I cannot wait for that. Like we we're, we we're, as a draft lottery was coming, we were nervously excited about it. I think kind of the mindset of like, let's just get this over with, so we can mm-hmm. stop worrying about it. I cannot wait for draft night. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna not be, just from a Hawks perspective. The oh, yeah. it's gonna be insane. Just to just to be there, to be in the building, like it's 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 gonna be awesome, and to be in in Nashville in June during a big event weekend, like it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a cool place to be. Speaking of being down there. Uh, we're going to be down there with our, our all city network friends. Yeah. Um, what about Arizona trading with them? Either six or 12 to move up. Do you think that they'd be open to options? Probably not six. They need, they need they, players, yeah. but maybe 12. I don't, I, you never know what Arizona, right? They are the, uh, the, they are a wild card of a franchise because just when you think you've got them figured out, I think a lot has to go with, they've got a big day coming up this week, Wednesday. Tomorrow, t- tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yeah. There's yeah. the referendum result yeah. on their new arena. If they get that new arena, I don't think they're trading either of those picks. They want to get... That makes sense. They want to get these guys and they want to have that young core ready to go for day one of that arena. They want to draft two guys that they could put on the season ticket brochure for that first season in the new arena. Well, you could see that, if anything, they're going to pull a Montreal, and they're going to draft one and then trade for somebody's Kirby Doc, right? Maybe. Somebody yeah. else's young potential star player who needs a change of scenery. We've got questions about that for the Hawks coming up too. But if Arizona is going to trade that pick – they're getting something established and young. Somebody that can put in yeah. to the roster. Yeah. Not just like trade down for pieces. Sure. It's like maybe yeah, maybe they talk to Ottawa about they, to brink it. If they don't get that arena, then who knows what the hell is uh, going to happen. I'm sure they'll be fine for another 30 years. Let's figure it out. Hey, uh, Gary Bettman's not living forever. Well, the Hawks <laughs> could trade for Brent Seabrook again, then trade him to Arizona or something. Why not? Because they got to have all the Hall of Famers there. <laughs> all right, what do we got next, Steven? Joey? Uh, Joe, oh, wow. Jesus. All right. Jeez. That okay. is a reflex. I was looking at you when I said it, too. It's all right. Caught me off guard, too. Um, okay. How does Richardson's style of coaching fit into a player like Bedard? <laughs> Good question. Every our, coach's our coaching style yeah. fits into Bedard. Go score <laughs> goals, kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go uh, get them. Well, I mean, you know, it's we have not really seen what Luke is going to do with a more skilled team. Yeah, he dumbed it down a lot last yeah. year. But we saw the way he used Lucas Reichel, and that can kind of be an indicator of, okay, when he gets a skilled player, how does he use him? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think he's against, like, yeah, he plays a simple system, but he lets guys go do what they're good at. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes him a good coach. It's not this cookie cutter, we play this system on every line with every player at all times. No. Yeah. He, he, He adapts to his personnel, which is a novel concept. Yeah, there there doesn't need to be a hard line with him saying like he plays a simplified North South hardworking game to where it's just like, Oh, you have to fit into this box right. and Connor Bedard is going to become a grinder. Not at all. Like he, he plays a simplified North South speed, hardworking predicated game style, of, style of coaching that allows for those players that have that, you know, special, special little something to go and, and, and be creative. Um, and I think when you have a coach that is playing that system at the professional level, you're getting guys that are just kind of operating off of second nature because these guys have been doing it for the majority of their lives, 20 plus years. Um, so you're, you're getting players who are, you know, getting down to a simplified game, playing an honest game. And that's where, you know, if you get, if you have all the small things covered, 
then the big things become a little bit easier. So I think that's that's what Richardson is looking to try and accomplish. Yep. Um, and it worked last year. Like, look, like, you know, the, the results were what they were, but you had a, a team that was losing a lot of games that was not getting the doors blown off night after night. Like, they were in games, and you had a, a less a team that was the lesser talented of the two on the ice most nights making pretty mm-hmm. much every game competitive. And that's what that kind of style of coaching can do. Yeah. I know we're only one year into Luke Richardson, but he does not – he is a guy that is – going to build his system around what his roster dictates and not the other way around. Not yeah. like the last guy who you have to play it my way. No, he's going to build his, he's going to want to play a certain way, but he's also going to realize w- that he can't play certain things. So he'll put, he'll put Bedard in situations to succeed that I'm, I'm uh, confident in. Yep. And when you have that simple style, when you get those more skilled players, they unlock more that he can do right. from an X's and O's standpoint. So it's, it, it benefits both sides. Yeah, it's going to be organic. It's going to be fun to watch how that grows over the next couple seasons, too, as more, of this, more talent is injected into the lineup. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yes, the future, it is bright. <laughs> and it is bright outside today. Yeah. It's not as warm as we want it to be, but that's coming. It's a start. It's coming. Yeah. The warm weather is coming. I went with shorts. And our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for that warm weather with premium Polaroid shades at an affordable price that is built to last. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product just as good as any expensive pair we've ever worn. They're way too humble at Shady Rays. They're better than any expensive pair I've ever worn durable frames and extremely clear optics for your outdoor adventures. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on the very first day, they told us they'll send you a brand new pair. Zero questions asked. You can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they will have your back long after you make your purchase. And when you make your purchase, you're going to feel great because together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners across the United States through the Shady Rays Impact Initiative. They're doing everything from building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays is making an impact in your communities and others just like it for you years to come. And if you don't love your Shady Rays, but you will, but yeah. just in case you don't, you can exchange for a brand new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. And as an extra incentive, they're giving you, our lovely CHGO listeners, their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use the promo code C. H G O at checkout, and you're going to get 50% off any order of two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people, including this guy right here. All right, that's a lot of people. And the Combat Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities they serve helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. They sure are. ComEd offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across their territory. ComEd also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy-saving opportunities, like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. How does that work, Mario? Well, listen up, Jay. An authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. Within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. So if you own a business, do not wait. Get started saving money and energy, also known as Monergy, today. For energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule a free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz, B-I-Z. Did you say comed.com slash powering biz, B-I-Z? I wish you'd listen to me. Yes, comed.com slash powering biz, B-I-Z. Schedule your appointment today. Will do, Mario. <laughs> Will do. 
Um, note for the chat: Patrick Kane's not coming back. Kyle Davidson said it Friday. You Drop it. a dollar. It's over. Yeah, I cannot move on with your life. Here's the next thing I cannot wait to happen: Patrick Kane signing up with another team so he could stop this nonsense. It's not happening. It's over. He wasn't the GM forced out. Said it. He wasn't Friday. It's done. Move on. Not coming back. No. It is over, as it should be. And somebody asked earlier, uh, what's the difference? Isn't signing Ryan O'Reilly just the same as signing Patrick King? No, it's not. No. Because Ryan O'Reilly will be walking no. into the, pe- the the locker room on day one the same day. As yeah, he has, he has veteran credentials, but he's, it's not. the Blackhawks have never been his team. He was never the face of the franchise. Right. And he's a center. Is is a different player. He's <laughs> a different type of player. Different type of of uh, yeah. It's it's not the same. Yes, the GM said he's not coming back. I don't know why we have to keep talking about it. So we're gonna stop. Well, thankfully, ho- thankfully we have a guy coming that's gonna make people move on from Patrick Kane. Pretty, you quickly. would hope. All right, Lawrence, what's next? <laughs> I'm just gonna misidentify um, you every question now. Let's think. What's up um, next, Natalie? <laughs> How about Ooh, geez, that's a deep Clark? Cut. That's a deep cut. Right yeah, there. Wow. that's a deep cut. Should the Maple Leafs explore blowing up their core yes. four? Yes. Hawks related. <laughs> who says no? 19th overall, Philip Roos <laughs> and Ian Mitchell RFA rights to Vancouver, Vancouver for 11th does. overall and Brock. Oh, sir. Bezer. Bezer. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Vancouver, Vancouver says does. no to that. If Vancouver <laughs> takes that trade, two bum-ass defensemen, come on. Yeah, no Just, one wants your on. trash. Like, you can say, like, how about this pile of trash and this pile of trash and this? You, ten piles of trash does not equal one good player. I think no. EA Sports even rejects that trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah was, they, come on. They, they do. Trust yeah, me. They no. do. Like, I... I yeah, you're going to... If In order to get that 11th pick and one of those guys, yes, they're desperate to move... Uh, Salary, but they ain't that desperate. You still got to give up something. A seventh defenseman and an eighth defenseman and a pick does not equal the eleventh pick. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your 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 ass, you your asset that? your asset values are not equal. Like you said, EA would completely say no. Yeah. We're not doing this trade. Can, you dumbass. Pull that back up, Sarah. <laughs> Let me see what it says. Um, <laughs> not calling our our, our question. <laughs> George, not calling George a dumbass. Nineteenth. No. So so yeah. okay. If you want, he, he does. George mentions the nineteenth overall pick. You, the conversation can begin there. If you're talking nineteen and a second, or maybe a two seconds or something. For Besser or Garland in eleven, then sure you got to give them something of value. Yeah, yeah. And Ian Mitchell and Philip Roos, all due respect, are not. There's valuable. no value for no. either of those, those guys are two right guys, now. Two guys, two guys you can get for nothing in in a couple of weeks. Right. The RF no the RFA rights to Ian Mitchell mean nothing. No one is trying. No, no. no one's. They're not negotiating with. No him. one's salivating, waiting for no. him, those, those him to come on. No, you're no, gonna those, be. Those are two guys destined to play in the AHL. You, you can get those like, guys on July first. You can get those guys for AHL minimum contracts. Right. Yeah. All right. And yes, the Maple Leafs should blow up their core four and give yeah. them to the Blackhawks. <laughs> All of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> eh, I don't know about All that. All right. We, Joey, what's next, buddy? Uh, and will Lucas Reichel officially be on the roster for next season? He's yes. a Hawk. I just can't wait to see play more games. For- yes. Yeah. Uh, there's no way he's not. Lucas Reichel will be a full time NHL player starting on opening night, especially with Bedard here now. Yes. Yeah, I think he already was going to be, but now it's even more of a for yeah, sure. There's thing. no way you can send him back to Rockford next year Mm-mm. unless he Mm-mm. just comes in like fifty pounds overweight and you know can't <laughs> skate anymore. Unless he looks like me on the ice. Unless, there. Yeah, unless he completely yeah. like no falls he, apart. He's a forgets full, how to play hockey. He's a full time NHLer and will be and will lead the Blackhawks in points next season. I'm sticking, sticking to, to it. I have to. I All set right. I set it on the air. I can't. That's I can't. Back, I, I have to stick to it. Yeah. Well, well, if you say it on the internet, you have to stick to it. Yes. Yes. That's everyone does. Yes. Right. You can't change your opinion. <laughs> of course. You, you can't. You, no, you that's can't. How he, that's things. why Al Gore invented it. All yes. right. Um, let's see. How about. What's next, Kevin? Who's one <laughs> prospect in the. Kevin's right over there. Who's one prospect in the organization that is underrated and can be a future big leader and or prospect that might be getting too much hype and be a letdown? Ooh. I like this. Oh, so like we're doing question. one of each? One yeah. of each. Yeah, okay. Really Either or. I'm going to... This might be controversial. I think that Nazar might not be as great as we all think he might be. Okay. He uh, Obviously, qualifying it was hurt for much of the season in Michigan, mm-hmm. but then came in, 
Started pretty good, but didn't do much for Michigan, at least statistically, upon returning. Again, huge, huge, like, massive injury he overcame. There was a question if he was going to play at all. Came back probably not at 100%. But if I'm projecting stardom, I'm not sure if I'm ready to project him as a star player. Okay. Maybe a, a, a middle six kind of a guy, but... I would say maybe we're slightly overrating Frank Nazar as a prospect. I'm yeah. I'm not gonna argue with that. I think that there's I think there's some that's that's a legitimate concern. But I mean he's got I think next year hopefully we see the full Frank Nazar. The full Nazar. The full Nazar um at Michigan. And he'll have an elevated role too. Yeah. Th- that'll help for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and along those same lines, I don't really think when I when I look at the Blackhawks roster pool or the prospect pool, I don't see guys that are like super overhyped. Really, too overhyped. Yeah, yeah not really. uh, there's, there's not like so along those same lines. I'm not calling this kid a bust, but if someone's going to let you down from the expectations, it might be Kevin Korchinski. Just because mm. everybody thinks he's automatic, he's Sky already high right now. He's yeah. already the next Duncan Keith. Right. He's already your number one power play guy. He's already you know Norris Trophy candidate in some people's minds. Let's take some time with that one. So if there's one guy that could possibly let you down from where his expectations are right now, it's Kevin Korchinski. Sure. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have high hopes for him. I think he's going to be a really good player. Yeah. Our, am I? Putting him in the Hall of Fame already? No. no. Let's take some time with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not yeah. that they're the same kind of prospect, but remember, three years ago, four years ago, everybody had Ian Mitchell penciled in as D2. Right. Right? Like, oh, he'll be the number two defenseman for the next 10 years. Like, nope. Yeah. That didn't happen. Yeah. One one guy that I'm, again, would qualify. I don't really see any busts in their prospect system right now. Um, but one guy that I'm interested to see if if he does eventually hit the ceiling or anywhere close to it is Sam Renzel because he's such a project yeah, long term project. guy. Yep. Like he had a he had a decent season in the in the USHL this year with Waterloo. Um didn't dominate. He's going to Minnesota, so if there's a program where he can grow and develop, that's that's one you want to go to. Um so that'll be interesting to see. But there's a part of me that thinks, you know what? Sometimes long-term projects never come to fruition. Um, mm-hmm. You know, being in Chicago, most often you've seen a lot of those happen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little wary of Renzel. A guy that I think is uh, maybe not getting as much hype uh, that I think can really turn into something special is uh, Ethan Del Mastro. I know we all yeah. think highly of him, but I think in the, in the scouting community – the you know prospect community at large, he's not necessarily looked at as one of the top ten guys that they have in the system. I think the kid's going to be really, really good. Like he's he's so there, there's an account that I've uh, that I interacted with a few times this uh, during the the OHL playoffs. I think it's called like Sarnia updates or something like that. They're huge Sarnia Sting fans. Um, they gave me some insight to Del Mastro as he's been playing because I haven't been able to see as much of yeah, I can't watch the games yeah. you know, I don't have an OHL TV subscription don't live in Canada um, but they just said like he was absolutely a monster shutting down uh, opponents this uh, this this postseason and um, you know he has a little bit of offensive upside he's very physically advanced for an 18 year old 19 year old like I'm excited to see him come to Rockford next year yeah Del Mastro's a guy that yeah, um, I agree. I think the another uh, along that line is a guy that kind of unfairly right away kind of got pushed down. Uh, Nolan Allen. Yeah, you know he's a first round pick. Yeah, when that pick was made, everybody was like, "Why are you picking this kid here? You probably could have got him second, third round." Mm. So yes, it was a stretch to get him by he who shall not be named. But from what we've seen. He can turn out very worthy mm-hmm. of that selection. I think he's he gives you kind of what you him and Del Mastro. Everybody wants that, you know, the Kale McCarr type. So you got your Kevin Korchinski for that. You've got he's going to be that puck moving guy. You got a couple other guys that could be puck movers. Mm-hmm. 
you still need that big bruising stay at home guy, Del Mastro and Allen fit that mold. So yeah. I think Allen is a guy that a lot of people just shrugged off right away because he was labeled as a, as a stretch, as a reach at that position at, at where he was picked in the first round, and that was fair. But as he's developed, you know, he's he's turning out to be a real good player. So I think yeah. that's a kid that when it's all said and done, could when you look back and you redraft that draft, he probably is right where he should have been. Yeah. That would be good. Another guy I think people are sleeping on is Colton Dock. Um, he's been banged up a lot, much like his brother, well, is which is kind of hurt. <laughs> yeah, kind of hurt him a little bit. But seems, uh, seems to be an issue for those. Dudes. Yeah, I mean, it just kind of. I don't know. It, when we even when we start rattling off like guys who are going to be here in the future, it's a name we don't say very often for whatever reason. And yeah. he's got all the tools. You know, when he's been healthy and he's he's looked impressive, he looks the part. He's doing well in Seattle. Like, I don't know. I. I really like Kirby as a person, and Colton seems to have a similar personality to Kirby. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I, I just feels like a, one that's kind of fallen through the cracks a little bit. Yeah, I think a, I think a lot of people f- focus on, like, Korchinski when it comes to, like, that WHL league of, of prospects, and guys like Allen and, and Doc are kind of put, uh, put behind him. But, yeah, I mean, he's... He's been ju- equally as impressive as, as some of those guys have been, especially as the postseason has gone on for Seattle, which they're in the WHL final right now. So, yeah, I, I, Colton will be here next year with, with Rockford, um, and that will be his first taste of pro yeah. hockey. It will be exciting to see what he does. I hope he makes it because I think he's got the personality that he'll become a, a, a very popular player. Here. Mm-hmm. He's got an outgoing personality. He doesn't sugarcoat what he wants to say. I think he's a different player than, than Kirby where Kirby had that kind of size, but Kirby was more of a perimeter guy. You know, didn't want to go between the dots as much. That's not the case for Colton. Yeah. I think Colton can develop that kind of edgy play that people want so bad, you know. Um, There's also no pressure on him. Right. Like, Kirby came out with a ton of pressure to be great right away. And with Colton, it's like, all right, whatever happens, happens. And, and, true. And could you imagine the pressure that'd be on him if Kirby was here and lived yeah. up to that hype? It'd be even greater. But mm. now it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, Colton Dak. We forgot about him. Right. So, yeah, I hope he makes it because I think he's a really good player and he's a really good quote. So selfishly, I want him to be around for a few years. But I think he's a, he's got that personality and the style of play that can make him uh, a fan favorite here. He just can't wear number 28. All right, Joseph, <laughs> let's keep going. All right. So, so, yeah, so, yeah. How season. about this one? Do we have a legitimate chance at getting Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, and would you like one or the other? Uh, yes, I think there's a legitimate chance of getting Austin Matthews. They've got unlimited cap space. They're going to have Connor Bedard. It's Chicago. It is a free agent destination. And uh, after next year, the arrow's going to be pointed up big time for Chicago. So, yeah, I think they have a chance for both. Um, if Matthews hits the market. I would say the Matthews yeah. situation, with what he's been saying since the Leafs have been eliminated, it makes it a little more tricky. He wants the return. Yeah. And he said he'd love to have an extension before this season begins. Obviously, mm-hmm. you don't want to go through a Patrick Kane type season. Sure. Uh, Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick talked a lot about that situation and the Maple Leafs in general on the latest 32 Thoughts that came out today. He mentioned that the date really to look at is July 1st because as as of July 1st a complete no movement clause kicks into the final year of Austin Matthews so if there's no extension before the season he has complete control Mm -hmm. and if they say hey we can't sign you so we're going to try and trade you he can nix any trade and he could could walk for nothing nothing. so the draft could be as I said the craziness of the draft a lot of people are already speculating William Nylander could be one of the guys traded. and You, you probably have to trade him to, to give Matthews that $13 million contract he's likely going to get. Because they already have Marner. In. Does Tavares get traded? You know, he's got one year left. That's, a, that's a more of a deal that's a little easier to swallow for a contending team. Again, mm-hmm. Colorado Avalanche may be like, hey, we need a center. We need a guy that's been a captain. Tavares has two years left. Two Sorry. years. Okay. Yep. Two years left. So, but still, point yeah. remains. So, if Marner, I don't think both Marner and Matthews hits free agency in two thousand in twenty twenty four. 
If they did, that imagine? would be crazy. Oh I don't God. see that. That one of those guys is staying long term, yeah. probably. Yeah, the and the other guy will probably have to hit. Will hit the market. As far as which one do I want? I don't really care. <laughs> take either I, yeah, one. Yeah, take either one. I I would prefer Matthews. I think if the if the Leafs organization has to pick one, I think they're gonna stick. You, I think you have to stick with Matthews. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, Marner has had that up and down ride out there. He's a fantastic player. I don't think he gets his no, enough credit for he how good not. he is. That's for sure. Because because of Austin Matthews and William Nealer and yeah. John Tavares, they, they all pull from each he's other. He's really the guy that makes that team go. Um, I'm just thinking of a guy like him with Connor Bedard would be pretty ridiculous. Be a lot of fun. And and, and you know, and then who's ever is centering that line, if they're both wings or whatever, the third guy on that line, just keep your stick on the ice in front of net and score yeah. forty goals. Work, work, work very hard to be, get be, them the be puck. Mike, be Michael Bunting and yeah. just be rewarded for thirty five goals get because <laughs> you you stand at the front of the net. Mm-hmm. Um, it does sound like though they want Bedard to be a center, and they're. Uh, try, try, I mean, try it. So try then it. that it. changes the, that changes things too. Like if he's your center, uh, then Matthews becomes what your number two center. Oh no, that would be like, awful. Oh no, <laughs> like, I know it's great, but then <laughs> or Bedard's your number two or, center, and then Rifle maybe he's your number three center, and then oh, like oh my what god, a horrible you know, world to live I know. in. <laughs> but it's maybe you say, hey, let's get the, let's round out that line and get yeah. and get Marner in here to play with uh, Bedard. I look, that's that's the magical part about getting the number one pick. Is it opens up this world of possibilities, mm-hmm. and look what it did for the Bears. Yeah, you know the right. Blackhawks aren't trading the number one pick, no. but right those options they they uh, they expand. That's for damn sure. Yeah. All right, Joey. What do we got next? All right, Mario. Just kidding, Jay. Yes. We got uh, <laughs> looking at what happened to Toronto and Edmonton with their stars not getting them to the conference finals. Do we want to see Bedard surrounded by a good depth of guys instead of trying to land an Austin Matthews type in a few years, or is it too early to tell? Too early to tell. Yeah. You I, cannot compare the Toronto Edmonton. I saw a lot of that as soon as Matthews and McDavid were out. Beware, Chicago. This is what happens. Well, but, but they also have seven. Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane won cups. Sidney Crosby won cups. You yeah. have to. Like, it's, it's, it's you not have, a. You have to have two or three or four, however many you can afford. Stars, you also have to have a lot of complementary pieces. And I think the problem with, with Edmonton over the years has been the investment in the stars and the complementary pieces are, well, we'll just throw guys out there. You know, here's Mike Smith in goal. You know, here's, uh, you know, ready for retirement, Duncan Keith. Here He's going to solve our defensive problems. Yeah. Like, y- you have to uh, be able to find the right pieces to play the complementary roles, those depth roles. It's the problem with in Toronto for years is that they're so top heavy that you get to their third and fourth lines and you can beat them through their third and fourth lines and their, and their defense. So yeah, I mean the, the, the teams that won multiple cups in the last couple of years, the Kings, the Blackhawks, the Penguins, they found that mix of our stars need to be our stars and our depth can carry us when, when those guys need yep. the slack picked up. You can't rely on Connor Bedard in your top line to win you every single game. You have to be able to have other things. Mm-hmm. Um, and the key to this working and sustaining is going to be continued success in the draft year in, year out. Not just year one and year two. Going forward, look at Tampa. Why have they been able to keep their – do you realize in the since 2015 – this is only the third time that Tampa has not been in the Eastern Conference Finals. It's crazy. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah. Why were they able to do that? Because they kept drafting well. Now, yep. granted, over the last couple of years, they said, draft picks, who the hell needs them? Right. We'll give them all to you for Tanner you know, and Brendan Hagel. Eventually, that's going to go sour because they stopped valuing the draft yeah. picks. But they were able to consist because, you know, oh, no, we can't afford this guy. Well, here's... Braden Point for you. Here's yeah. Kucherov mm-hmm. coming up for yep. you. Yeah. Like, here's, you know, Eric Cernak. Like, all these guys, you know, they drafted Andre Vasilevsky. You have to keep that pipeline coming. So that's been part of the problem with Toronto and Edmonton. How many great – like, yes, Toronto has that amazing core, three of those four guys. And if you want to throw Morgan Riley in there as a fifth, all, all drafted. homegrown guys yeah. drafted. 
where are those role guys that they've been able to draft and and develop have yeah have there sustained success with yeah. role players they got their their entire bottom six was like ex blackhawks <laughs> <laughs> so it's like yeah you know you gotta be yes it's very easy to draft an austin matthews and a william nylander and a mitch marner it's a lot harder to draft a christopher steeg and a dave boland and a right and, and you know those type guys well that's the see that's and, and kind of to the question that's the thing is like does it make sense if you you if we're all assuming Connor Bedard is going to be as advertised because everybody is, he's going to need a max deal in a few years. He'll be signing a twelve thirteen million dollar deal, and then let's say you bring in Drysaddle or Marner or Matthews. There's another thirteen million. There's twenty six million tied up in two guys. Can you do that? And still have the depth to compete for Stanley Cups. If you're drafting, yes. I think if you're yeah. drafting correctly, yeah. But Tampa's like, been able to we do talk it. about the Hawks doing it with Kane and Taze for ten and a half million. But what did they do once those deals were signed? Everything was won before those deals were signed. Yeah, I, I and I and I, I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, who's running the show. I think you have to have a you have to have a perspective of we know that you know w- w- when the Blackhawks get to that point, okay, their window is open. But you can't only look through that window. You have to look at okay, well, this this next window. What are we going to do to open that? Um, and I, I I think a lot of teams get get stuck in the like okay, our window is the next three years, so they push all their chips in for the next three years, and if they don't get anything, then you're you're you don't have anything for the next you know the next round of of trying to you know get your team con- competitive again. So that's when we get to this point where it's just like Toronto going all in with all these guys and now it's like oh they got to blow it up because they you know they can't get past the the first round the second round so i i think it comes down to who's who's kind of running the show and and if they can keep in mind like hey like like you said like we have this big contract here this big contract's coming up this big contract's coming up we might have to make a decision before we want to to make sure that we don't handcuff ourselves and say well it's this or bust you know, so I, I think the the Blackhawks of the last you know decade plus, um, a lot of those guys were drafted in. Uh, a lot of those guys were drafted by not the guy who blew it all up. Um, and I, I think to Greg's point, like that's where you're you're, you're going to have to find players that you can say, you know what, you if you max out as like a third line center for six, seven, eight years and you never make more than three, four, five million dollars a year, like you can still have a lot of success doing that, being that kind of player and play a role on maybe a, a cup winning team. Like, you know, there's there's oh, a career. lot of guys. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that like, you know, you can find in those later rounds that eventually become those like role players. So I think that's really important. You don't want, you can't go out and just buy all those guys. Right. Just real quick, those the, those Taze and Kane extensions were signed on July 9th, 2014. So they won a cup after signing them. The deals kicked in when the cap 2015, 16, and they did not win anything from then on. So those things can hurt you. They can hurt you. So, you know, that's, and and there's no one I trust more than Kyle Davidson to have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G ready to go for, uh, you know, those free agent contracts. So we'll see. All right. Let's, I think we probably got time for one more before we wrap things up. Uh, you got a good one for us there, Joseph? Yes. Um, all right. Let's do hmm. Let's do goalie situation. Do we expect to keep Soder, Bloom, Stauber, Camesso? Camesso, sorry. Camesso, my, yep. it's, it's just tough for me. Uh, lots in the pipeline, but curious who gets the eventual NHL job. So, so soon to tell. Soder, Bloom just signed a two-year deal. Uh, next year will be Mrazek and Soder, Bloom. Um, and then Camesso is going to get the share of starts in Rockford. And uh, with Stauber, the, with Stauber, and the mm-hmm. expectation is in a year or two that Camesso would come in and be the number one. But there are some that project Soderbloom is a number one too. Uh, maybe not an elite like you know Shesterkin, Hellebuck type. No, but a, a legit NHL starting All goalie. Those guys are sitting home watching the playoffs though now. Right, it's true. Right, so that, I think that's if, everything. Is I think if you're if you're if you're going by how the Hawks value them. I still think they have Camesso number one, uh, Solder Bloom number two, Stauber's probably number three, and then down below that. But uh, next year will be Mrazek and Stauber, this, or uh, and uh, Solder Bloom probably splitting time. This yep. postseason has shown that 
a shift in goaltending strategy by teams. You got to have more than one starter. Yeah, you have to believe in your backup. You have to have like you're. We're, I think we're going to see more tandems. Uh, I said this a couple of weeks ago. Compare it to the running back position in in the NFL. Yeah. Especially when you play fantasy football because you're like, oh, my God, there's only three running backs I'd take in the first round. On the rest, it's just a crapshoot. You could say that about NHL goalies Absolutely. right now. Mm-hmm. Vasilevsky, Shosturkin, Sorokin, Hellebuck. After that. You see Saros. Sor- yeah, but after that, that's five guys. That's 27. Look at Vegas. Mm-hmm. Look what they've done this season. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they, had, they, they went into the season thinking it was going to be Robin Leonard. His hip falls off. He misses the whole year. Might have been a blessing in disguise. Logan Thompson takes over the roles, relatively unknown rookie. He's great. Mm-hmm. Then he gets hurt. So then it's Laurent Brassant, who <laughs> who has been a He was backup, playing really well. And then yep. he was playing great. He gets hurt. In comes Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill single-handedly eliminates the Oilers. Yep. Last night was gave up goals on the first two shots and then stopped, what, 41 in a row? Something like that. Crazy. Yeah. And then, oh, in case he doesn't, like – fit the bill he kind of crumbles <laughs> oh you have two time stanley cup winner jonathan quick waiting to take over sure. just sitting there why not so you gotta have you can't the days of having an ed bell for or a superstar goalie i yeah, think Uncle are, Dad. I, I i think they're because those guys don't they're not out there yeah. as much as they were Carey yeah. price might have been the last one to do that of the of the modern era maybe yeah i mean and i think a lot of that also has to do yeah, hellebuck does it but w- with the with the he's at home. with the uh the analytic rise in analytics in hockey, yeah. I think, has a lot to do with that going, hey, we don't need to pay a $10 million goalie. The numbers prove we can get two guys at $3 million, play two guys at half what we'd pay one superstar goalie, and we'd get just as much, if not better, results. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. All right, should we do one more? We can do one we more. Yeah, one more. Uh, sure. One sure. More and then we'll, All right, uh, let's do it. And we'll how about uh, just general stuff? Any rule changes you guys would like to see happen this off season? Ooh. Uh, I want new referees because they all suck. <laughs> when did you move to Toronto? <laughs> uh, rule changes, man, that's tough. I, I've I've always had this like extreme rule change idea, Ooh. where if a team is down, if a team is down one and on the power play, the game can't end until the power play expires. I kind of like so that. Like, if so, the like if if it's, it's, so like let's say you're losing one nothing, uh-huh. and the team that's winning takes a penalty with a minute left, you get an extra minute of the game. Oh, you play out the power play. Play out the I power like play. Oh, idea. okay. It prevents, <laughs> it prevents teams from being shitty at the end of a game. I also think sure, that yeah. if you give up a shorthanded goal, your power play ends. Yes. I agree with that. I, I, would, I will pound the drum for that one. I always liked... Uh, if a goalie commits a penalty, he should have to go to the penalty box for two minutes and your backup has to come out. <laughs> That's fun. I like that. Cold. Or he's got to put right a feeder on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, like, realistically, like, it's not actually, a, like, a rule in the game itself. I want to get rid of the loser point. Yeah. No yeah. more no more points for losing in overtime or losing in a shootout. Ooh, you took it past regulation. You still lost. You don't deserve a point. Win. Or if you're going to give out a point, for losing in regu- in overtime or shootout, make regulation wins worth three points. Yep. I love that. Uh, I was going to say, I, I, I would love the three-point system. Yes. Regu- then then player, then teams won't, like, if it's three points for a regulation win, you won't see teams in a tie game with two minutes to go just kind of, eh, la, 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 Let's we're playing to, for yeah. a point. Let's both get a point and be happy. Yep. Let's make those teams earn those playoff spots. I would do three points for a regulation win, two points for an overtime win, one point for a shootout win, and if you lose the game at all, you get zero. I'm for it. That's what I, I like do. that. But yes, get rid of the loser point or add an extra point to uh, to a regulation win. Uh, Mighty Midnight Mike says instigator penalty gone. Yeah, I don't necessarily. Uh, yeah, I, I. You could also it's do there a, for a reason, but yeah. you could you could you could modify it. You could also do a zero tolerance head hit. Yeah. Contact that head, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Like they have in the IIHF. Yep. Easy for me to say. Yeah. All right. We got to wrap things up. We went a little bit long. Thanks for being with us. We want to remind you before we wrap up that Fubo TV is freaking awesome. It's where I watch my television. I get 140 plus live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. I can stream live TV from any device. I can watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price. And you can start watching immediately with a seven-day free trial. Go to FuboTV 
dot com slash chgo that's f-u-b-o tv.com slash chgo there's no contract there's no cable there's no hassle just sign up and start watching you get a thousand hours of cloud dvr included at no extra charge and you can watch your local teams while traveling catch up on the pga championship the french open wmba season getting underway the nhl draft coming up in just over a month nhl nba playoffs are underway and of course if you're a cub fan and you want to stream Marquee, Fubo TV is the only place to do it. So check out the Cubs on Marquee on Fubo TV. And, of course, you get the Sox, Bulls, and Hawks on NBC Sports Chicago. Watch the most Chicago sports with Fubo TV. Use the link in our description to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. FuboTV.com slash CHGO. And you'll see on our set the great decorations of Clark the Cub. There he and is. Justin Fields and Pantless. Hayden Wisniewski's Immaculate Inning, Devin Don't Hester, all this great stuff behind us and on the shelves and all around. Uh, if you want your man cave or she shed or living room, basement, attic, wherever you want to hang out and watch your sports, if you want it decked out like our CHGO set, you got to go over to our friends at FOCO. That's F-O-C-O. Get yourself fitted out in the best sports gear around. On top of all the bobbleheads and collectibles, they also have amazing shoes, hoodies, signs, anything that you want your favorite team or player to be on, they can hook you up with it. It's spring, baseball season's going on. Uh, you can get some Aloha shirts, some straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need to get ready for the game. Go to our friends at Foco. Dot com that's f o c o dot com or click the link in the description and for all non pre sale items if you use the promo code c h g o you're gonna get ten percent off again that's foco dot com f o c o dot com all right I know there were a lot of questions we did not get to uh, we'll save them for a show down the road or maybe a mailbag Monday coming up uh, we're gonna be doing maybe them all tomorrow season, it's been, so. maybe tomorrow it spills over yeah talk to us Tuesday or something sure. like that we are gonna talk to Stephen Wino tomorrow. Uh, two o'clock. He was in the room where it happened, as they say in Hamilton, he's, when those lottery balls he's were. Also uh, a Capitals were guy, right? He is uh, DC based. I know he, the reason he couldn't do it last week was because he was at Commanders uh, mini camp. Nice. Well, maybe, so maybe we can also talk to him about the whole if Mitch coughs there at eight, what happens with the Capitals? Yes, sure. there is no shortage of things for Stephen, but the primary reason for the visit is to talk about being in the room where the draft draft lottery happened. It's going to be very cool, very interesting stuff. Quickly. Tonight, game seven, Kraken or Stars? Stars. Going Stars. Well, now I feel dumb. I'm going to say Stars, but I, th- I think the Kraken might have a real good chance. They got it. a chance. I mean, yeah, it's not, not, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for, like, triple overtime. Let's stay up to one you, in the morning. You talk about a team built with depth. Yeah. Like, yep. that's, stars are at home. I think Ottinger is the good Jake Ottinger tonight. He'll have to be. And uh, I think I'm calling it now. He's on the cusp of, like, Doing what he does. Jason Robertson, game-winning goal. Love it. We'll see what happens. Love it. Should be fun. I mean, the Kraken have nothing to lose, though. They have an all-playoffs. How, how strange. Game seven on the road. How strange would it be that the, the two newest teams in the NHL in the, in the conference finals? That'd be really West. interesting. The final four would be Carolina, <laughs> Florida, Vegas, and Seattle. Just what the even, NHL even is if, dreaming even of. Even if it's hey. Dallas. I mean, you got yeah, even Dallas, no traditional, yeah. like, traditional hockey, hockey markets market, left. Yeah. Good. Hey, I am fully rooting it. for the Panthers, Something though. Something new. Why not? Tavo might come back, though. I know. That'll be tough, but I love an underdog story. And Whoever and so, wins in the East, I am rooting for in the Stanley Cup Finals. Someone <laughs> said in the chat, too, like, if the Hawks don't beat the Penguins, the Panthers aren't even in the playoffs. Yeah. You're welcome. There's, hey, there's a lot of, lot of different they things should, that could have happened this they year. They should sign Buddy Robinson to a five-year deal just for that. <laughs> they should give Matthew Kachuk to the Blackhawks as a thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. All right. We're going to wrap things up. Thanks to Joey for running the show today. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 2 with Stephen Wino on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.